the past 18 months or so have not been very kind to Green Lantern fans. There's basically been almost no sightings of Hal Jordan. I guess he finally showed up a little bit in Dark Crisis, but he wasn't in the Green Lantern series from Jeff Thorne that rolled out of Future State. We saw what happened to Guy Gardner. Tom King kind of turned him into this weird super stalker boyfriend that ends up getting murdered in the human target. And to be quite frank, the Jeff Thorne Green Lantern run is one of the worst Green Lantern runs in the history of comic books. It's absolutely awful. I understand what he was going for, but he did not succeed in what he was trying to do. He was trying to elevate Jon Stewart. He's going to become the Emerald Knight. That's what we were promised on the very last page. And apparently, despite not having very good sales and basically being reviled by Green Lantern fans... And the general state of DC Comics outside of Batman not being very good, they're actually going to continue and finish the story, at least in a one-shot. We're getting more Jeff Thorne Green Lantern. Who the fuck asked for that? Nobody outside of Jeff Thorne wanted this. Well, maybe Marco Santucci because he's going to make a little bit of money. Here's the details. The last volume of the Green Lantern ongoing series ended with something of a cliffhanger and the promise of the return of not only the new Godstorm-powered, sword-wielding Emerald Knight version of Jon Stewart, but the return of the Emerald Knights, plural, as well. Their promised return will happen in November in Jon Stewart, the Emerald Knight number 1, a 48-page one-shot by the last Green Lantern series creative team of writer Jeffrey Thorne and Marco Santucci. Why in the hell is this comic book being even produced? It was such a terrible, just terrible take on the Green Lanterns. He essentially like broke everything by the time he was done with it. And we've certainly seen the Green Lantern lore and concepts be broken by DC Comics in the past, only to be kind of fixed up by crisis and stuff like that. I understand we are kind of in the middle of a crisis. That's another issue, which we'll talk about here in a few moments. But this comic book, on the very last issue, was barely cracking the top 100. I guess maybe if you squint real hard and turn your head a little bit, you can go, well, that's a pretty good performance by modern day DC comic standards. We've seen how badly they've fallen as of late, but literally, literally nobody in their right mind even asked for this comic book. I don't know any Green Lantern fans that like this particular run from Jeff Thorne. He's just, first of all, he's not a particularly good comic book writer. He certainly loves the Green Lantern lore, although he hates Hal Jordan. He's admitted that. And he is a big fan of Jon Stewart. But I'm a big fan of a lot of things, and it doesn't mean that I should be writing them. You know what I mean? He just isn't a comic book writer. You've got this really convoluted, stupid story. He ends up destroying the central power battery by the end. And next thing you know, Jon Stewart is the god storm, and he's talking to Jack Kirby. And Green Lanterns for the past 30 and 40 years are now Star Sapphires and Blue Lanterns. He just... All, did all kinds of stupid stuff, not to mention that his series was just really oversaturated with way too much of Joe Mullins and Teen Lantern. Another reason that his run is absolutely despised. I don't know what the hell DC Comics are thinking. I know what Green Lantern fans are thinking. Why the fuck? Can we get a Hal Jordan comic book series? We just got this Dark Crisis Worlds Without a Justice League Green Lantern story from Philip Kennedy Johnson. I guess he did the best that he could. Did you read it? I read it. I thought it kind of sucked. Was it better than Tom King's Superman story? Yeah. Was it better than uh, Dark Crisis Young Justice? Well, sure, of course. That's one of the worst comic books on the market. But was it good? Absolutely not. It wasn't. It was pretty boring. I don't even know why the comic book was even produced. Nothing of substance was introduced in that story. It didn't do the damage of the Superman, but uh, just being a Green Lantern fan is just really, really frustrating right now. And if you're a fan of the series and the characters, I imagine you know exactly how I feel. This is what the synopsis of the one shot is going to be. Green Lantern John Stewart will have to become something greater as he squares off against a god gone mad in order to save his fellow Green Lanterns and escape the dark sectors in a special one shot this November. John Stewart has been trapped in the dark sectors for months with the rest of his Green Lantern comrades. With the power of the god storm at his disposal, John's using everything he can to take down Isak, the mad new god. And bring his fellow corpsmen home. John will need to become something new to win the war against Isak. He'll need to become the Emerald Knight. Didn't we already just see John Stewart become the Emerald Knight? Something new where he became the God Storm? Wasn't that the entire purpose of that 12 issue terrible run of Green Lantern? Why are they capstoning this one with another stupid story? That is essentially, not essentially, that is unequivocally not necessary within the context of DC Comics. We've already seen John Stewart as the God Storm lose 
I'm sure you've all noticed that, and you're wondering, why would they even make this comic book? We just saw him die. That's right. This comic book appears to take place after the events of April 12th, Green Lantern number 12, but before the events of April 26th, Justice League number 75, and subsequent Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths event, where John participated in the battle against Pariah and the Dark Army and appeared to be killed. Hal Jordan has also been a major presence in Dark Crisis, so the Emerald Knight special seems designed to wrap up the Dark Sector Green Lantern storyline and catch things up to the beginning of the Dark Crisis continuity. But why is that necessary? We literally already saw the character. Well, he didn't die. We know he did die. That's like the worst thing about Dark Crisis is we know stuff that the heroes don't know. I'm, uh, I'm not going to get on that rant one more time, but it, it just makes the story take... It just removes all the tension from the storytelling. But we saw what happened to Jon Stewart. He's in his own happiness multiverse that Pariah created for him, where he created, I guess, the Jon Stewart sector because he's so egotistical that he wouldn't want to protect, you know, sector 2814. He would only want to protect a sector named after himself. That sounds like Jon Stewart, doesn't it? But this story is 100% worthless. I assume, this is my assumption, that it is not gross incompetence, that they had a follow-up miniseries planned to, I guess, finish the story that was going to be called Emerald Knights or whatever. Obviously, that was teased in the final page of Green Lantern number 12, written by Jeff Thorne, and then they realized the sales were so bad, but they'd already paid Santucci to illustrate it, and they'd already paid enough for Jeff Thorne to write it. So they said, well, why don't we just make it a, uh, a one-shot and wrap this bad boy up? But, you know, sometimes... It's better to just put it in the drawer and forget that it ever happened. Every Green Lantern fan that's out there is just waiting for you to retcon all this stuff out of existence anyway. There's no reason to go out there and create another 48-page story and remind people just how terrible, and I do mean god-awful, Jeff Thorne's take on Green Lantern really is. I don't understand why the guy keeps getting work at DC Comics at this point. He must be exceptionally cheap, but I thought he was like this big guy at Hollywood. You would think he would be more expensive, but look what he's doing on Blood Syndicate. They can't sell that comic book either. He doesn't have a feel for superhero comic books. He might have a feel for reading them, but he sure as hell can't write them. The idea of Jon Stewart being elevated and being the focal point of Green Lantern for a spell does not bother me at all. I would prefer to see Kyle Rayner if it's not going to be Hal Jordan because he was the other big Green Lantern in the past. But Jon Stewart's a great character. He works as a good leader. But you needed a really good, competent, solid writer. And they never had that. And let's not even talk about the Tom Rainey art, which was actually worse than the writing. Half of it was Santucci, which was good. And the other half was Tom Rainey, which was absolutely just god-awful dog shit as far as comic book art goes, for a Green Lantern especially. Just did not fit the Green Lantern universe. Then you throw in the abundance, the mega amounts of Joe Mullins and Teen Lantern, two characters that are absolutely despised by Green Lantern fans. It was, just, it was the perfect storm of bad comic book writer trying to elevate a character that could have used it but didn't know what he was doing and then threw in other elements in that nobody wanted. And by the end, just breaking everything. For no reason other than, I guess, the DC editorial staff told him to do it. But he's supposed to be the world's biggest Green Lantern fan. And now we're left with this stupid one shot that no one ever asked for. You know what we want? I want a Hal Jordan ongoing series. I want a Hal Jordan miniseries. I don't mind if you have a, a Jon Stewart and the Green Lantern Corps miniseries written by somebody else. We need something good to happen for Green Lantern fans. We already got the bad news that it appears... Well, I, maybe that Green Lantern series on HBO Max is actually going to happen. It sounded like maybe it wouldn't, but maybe it's still happening. Even if it does happen, that thing's a few years out. Something good needs to happen in the near future. If you need a reminder just how bad Jeff Thorne's Green Lantern run is and how they broke the Green Lantern core and mythology so spectacularly, I made a video talking about it, how he broke everything, yet they keep hiring him and bringing him back to write more Green Lantern.